No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, we have a rather unusual little gin for you. So let me introduce you to this rather small and chubby looking chap, which is Isle of Butte handcrafted small batch oyster gin. And I believe it is the first gin in the world. I don't know, I imagine, I probably should have researched it, but I believe it is the only gin in the world actually made with oysters. So I am very much looking forward to getting stuck into this one today for you, my friends. But before we do, I have another thank you to say, a very special thank you today actually, because one of my patrons that was a patron and then left the patrons has now returned to Patreon. So thank you very much to my first ever returning patron, Becaroni and Cheese over in Canada. Becaroni, you are a uh, official supporter of the show. I am forever in your debt and I salute you. So my friends, let's not mess around. Let's see what they say about it on the old website, shall we? Now we haven't had an accent on the show for a while, have we? So I'm pleased to tell you that this gin is from Scotland. So good news, the good old Scottish accent will be coming out once more. From the Isle of Butte comes the world's first oyster gin. We charge our wee still with the shells of wild Scottish oysters to add a delicate maritime essence. When blended with citrus and other botanicals, this creates a savoury gin, which is a perfect pair for seafood and the ideal base for a martini. However, to begin with, you must try the oyster gin neat. The taste profile is one of a kind. So then, they don't actually use the slimy bit, the actual oyster itself, which I don't know if you've ever eaten one, it's, it's kind of a bit weird, it's just it's like swallowing a big thing of snot. They just use, for some reason, the oyster shells. So I guess they whack a load of those shells in there. I would never have thought to have done that. But apparently, I guess if you put real oysters in there, in there it probably would have turned out black or grey or something. It wouldn't be very sort of uh, uh, pleasant to look at. So I'm very, very intrigued about this. I've literally no idea what it's going to taste like. So I say, my friends, let's crack the fellow open and bloody well find out. And good news, of course, we have, by the look of it, a rather hefty old cork in there. So we're going for a wee Scottish cork test. The wee Scottish cork test. Here we go. Do we have a squeak? Oh, my hands are too cold. I can't even get a grip on it. Hang on a second. <sighs> Let's try that again. Go for a squeak. Christ alive. It's a tough cork. Oh, there we go. I have to break for the label. Hang on. What the... <laughs> This is very strange. There we go. Hang on. This is a terrible cork test. I'm going to have to take this label off because it's ruining the cork test. There we go. Right. Get rid of that. Throw it in the bin. Straight in. It might have done. It might not have done. You don't know. You didn't see it. So here we go. Take three of the cork test. There we go. Do we have a squeak? Nope. After all that, nothing at all. Okay. Go for the pull pull. Here we go. Oh, a beautiful pull. What it lacked on the squeak, it made for on the pull. Very pleased with that. So then, let's get him in the old glass and have a wee sniff of the, uh, what do they say? A wee sniff of the jobby. No, jobby means something else in Scotland. Look it up. So I'm expecting a kind of a sort of a, uh, sort of a, a fresh sort of sea. So that sort of smell when you stand by the seaside and the waves are crashed against the shore and you get that sort of, that sort of sea air. So let's have a bit of a go. Oh my God, I tell you what, that was a bloody... Bang on prediction. It's very, 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 I was going to say salty. It's not salty. Very, they're going to say C-E. That makes no sense. C-E? C. Now I just sound like Manuel from Forty Towers. But, but I think you get the idea. It's a very, what am I, what's the word I'm trying to look for? I don't know. It tastes, it smells exactly that. That kind of sort of fresh, sort of salty essence you get when it sort of crashes against the, the, the rocks and all that. But um, as you can see, I'm struggling here. I think we just get the old um, tonic in and have a good old taste. So it did say it has to be tried neat, doesn't it? But I'm going to try it with the tonic first and I'm going to sip out the bottle in the way I usually do. So how much are we going to have in there? I reckon about that much. What ABV is it? I think it's 43%. Hang on a second. Yeah, 43%. So about right what we'd like, what we like for the normal uh, sort of standard sort of uh, bracket for the London dry gin. So I say to you, my friends, Isle of Butte oyster flavoured gin. I say cheers. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Right. So yeah, very, very different to anything you'll have had before. And 
definitely fallen into this bracket of the, what seems to be a sort of a new up and coming thing, which is savoury gins. I talked about that seaweed one I did a while ago, de, de Ville, I think it's called, although it's spelt like de mule, it's de Ville. That was a savoury one. And also the shiitake mushroom one. And then there was a sort of a, t a tomato one with sun-dried tomatoes. And this is really becoming a thing now. And a lot of people kind of turn their nose up at this and like, mm, not really sure about that. A gin should be citrusy. And yeah, traditionally it should, but I'm really liking the savoury ones. It's like kind of enjoying something that you love, but in, but in a, a slightly different way. It's a bit like when you get your wife or partner to dress up as sort of a, a, a sexy costume or something. You know, it's the same wife, just enjoying her in a different way. <laughs> But back to the flavours, it's, they're very, very delicate and light flavours. There's nothing kind of heavy and just sort of sodden and big and overcoming. It's beautifully, they beautifully dissipate, but they dissipate um, in a kind of a sort of a productive way. That makes no sense, let me try to clarify. It's like it's that the flavours slide onto the tongue and then just evaporate, but the evaporation leaves a sense of kind of freshness in there very very delicately citrus but and sort of a warming sort of memory of it really kind of makes the juniper stand out and that just sort of hovers in the air once it's gone but kind of sort of infused with all that is this ah, I keep wanting to say a saltiness, a, a kind of a salinity about it. I think salinity means salt, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go for the word anyway. This kind of a sort of salinity and almost just a touch of it, a, a kind of a salt watery sort of essence, but obviously it, it, that sounds disgusting because no one likes to drink salt water, but just to imagine just a tiny 1%, a mist, almost like a mist, a salty mist, like I say, the sort of thing that when you get the, when the waves crash against the shore and comes into the air and you breathe it in, you get that, you get that in abundance. And to be honest, who doesn't like to stand and sniff in that sort of salty sea air? It just invigorates you, doesn't it? And that, it's, they've kind of captured it in an essence and put it into the bottle. It, it's, it's something quite beautiful, actually. It, it really is very, very good. And as they say on the website, I can imagine it pairing very, very well with seafood because I don't really like to drink gin with my meal. I like to have it after the meal. That's when I enjoy it. But I could genuinely, especially with some sort of light, like some sort of, I don't know, some sort of fish or, or sort of um, crab or something like that, anything that's come out of the sea, I think that would, in the same way that I enjoy red wine with a steak. I don't like red wine at all, to be honest, but get a big steak in front of me, bite the steak, drink the red wine. I absolutely love it. I could imagine if I was having some lovely old big king crab's legs like they do over in California. Well, I'm sure they do it everywhere, but I've had them in California and they're very nice. I could imagine slurping down a lovely bit of crab meat and then just washing it down with that. And I tell you what, if I'm going to try that, I'm going to get some food. I'm going to do a food pairing video with gin soon. I've just thought of that right now, but I think that would be absolute heaven. Now on these videos, I always say I'm going to try it neat, or very often, whenever I say I'm going to try it neat, uh, I, I always forget to do it. However, this time I have actually remembered it, because they actually specifically said on the website it should be enjoyed neat, and probably over ice, but to be honest, it's so cold in the studio at the moment, as many of you know, I've got no heating, hence the jacket. I think it's quite cold enough to try it, so I'm going to drink it straight out of the bottle. Apologies about this, but here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, to be honest, as always for me, I find drinking it neat it leaves me a little bit cold, not, not least because I'm in a cold studio, generally sort of emotionally cold. I just feel you get the burn of the alcohol, but a lot of the flavors just seem to float away. I'm getting way more with, with the tonic. It just unlocks them and releases them and lets them flow. Personally, I don't think you get any more from drinking it neat. I know I have a lot of gin, uh, neat gin drinkers and neat gin, neat drink, oh God, neat everything drinkers on the show. And th that's fine, you know, each their own, absolutely. But personally, I would stick, I think those t the tonic works very well on this, as I do with most gins. So then, gin lovers, you're thinking to yourselves, that's a very unique and interesting sounding gin. But are we gonna have to pay extra for that uniquity, uniquity, uniqueness, uniqueness and uh, I forgot what the other word was. It doesn't matter. Let's just tell you what it costs. It is a very pleasing £38, which is about $50 and 41 euros. And that is towards the top bracket of my smaller distilleries, which is between 30, well, up to £40. And I tell you what, I'm really pleased I tried this one. I was looking at unusual gins the other day and this one popped up on the list. And I am 
absolutely more than happy to pay that. And if you ever see it, this is definitely a top recommendation from this show. Get this fat little chap on your shelf and you will not regret it. Well, gin lovers, what's an unusual video to do? Oh, that's, that's, oh my God, that stickiness off the label has stuck it to the desk. Hang on. Oh, there we go, I got it. I wonder if it sticks to my head. Nope, doesn't work. I thought it was going to be good for the rest of the video. Never mind. Well then, gin lovers, what a video it was today. It, it worked this time. So uh, we'll, we'll keep it going, see how long it lasts. Um, oh, no, there we go. That's, I think we should abandon that. It's not working. But my point is, uh, I say this quite a lot at the moment. Even at this point in the show, we're, we're still discovering new things. And I think this kind of savoury gin is going to be a new sort of, it's kind of bubbling under the surface at the moment, but it's just started to crack through. So I would look out and I'm looking forward to trying more of these gins because I think it's just nice to sort of uh, take gin in, in as many directions as it goes. The whole thing that, uh, uh, the reason I liked it in the first place was the versatility. And you cannot get more versatile, an example of more versatile. Well, well you can, the elephant poo gin, for example. But in terms of going in a different direction, I love this. I'm very excited to see where we're gonna go with it. And of course, I say to you people at the Isle of Butte Distillery, keep up the good work my friends. So guys, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it useful, informative, or anything else at all, please don't forget to subscribe to my show. Uh, press the little like button on the video, and of course the bell button so you get notified when my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show like good old Beccaroni and Cheese did, head over to the Patreon page, or indeed the join button below the video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and members, and keep Drinking the gen.